This place has a couple of things that most tracks would love to have, but there's one thing about it that isn't so favorable. In this video, you're gonna see inside the underrated Northline Speedway like never before. Okay, so let's start with the location. As some of you may know, Australia is pretty big for its population. And Northline Speedway is located in the very isolated Northern Territory capital city of Darwin. So how isolated is it? Well, Australia only has eight capital cities and Darwin by far has the smallest population of them all. And it's really, really far away from the others. The closest is Perth at over 2,600 kilometers away or about 1,650 miles from my imperial friends. In fact, Darwin's next closest city isn't even in Australia. Anyway, Northline Speedway is about a 15 minute drive from the Darwin city center. It's located in Hidden Valley and I think it's called Hidden Valley because it's in a valley and it's hidden. As you can already see, the dirt track isn't the only motorsport track here. It's just a part of an entire complex of different tracks that host all different kinds of motorsport categories. There's Hidden Valley Raceway, which hosts categories like supercars. The front stretch is so long that they also have a drag strip alongside it. There's both bitumen and dirt cart circuits, which actually look pretty decent. And judging by the sign out the front, the place also hosts quad racing, drift events, and even mud racing. Now, back to the Speedway. It was built in 1982, so it's been around for over 40 years. I asked how many people work here, and they told me that there are zero full-time employees. But there are over 40 volunteers, and that number only goes up when it comes to events like Chariots of Thunder. The Speedway runs between 14 to 16 events a year, and the majority of them include sprint cars. As for the track measurements, it's 400 meters on the pole line and about 17 meters wide. And as is common with Australian tracks for some reason, the straights are short relative to how long the corners are, making it a roundish shape. And when it comes to the banking at the track, it's actually a little bit deceiving because the infield is like a mound and comes up quite high. So you can't actually really tell looking from these shots here, but the track is decently banked. For some reason, cameras never really seem to show banking very well, but basically from the pole line to the fence line, there's probably about a two meter height difference and not just in the corners, on the straights as well. Yeah, the, the straights are actually decently banked. As for the track record, it's just inside the 10 second bracket. The facility itself will hold about 10,000 people at capacity and it's really different because it's kind of built at the bottom of a hill, Hidden Valley, right? When you first park up top, you then walk to the edge where the seating slowly works its way down and eventually leads to the track and then the pits is behind that. That hillside seating is on the back stretch and then there's a few other grandstands around the perimeter of the track. But where you really wanna try and sit is right here where I am called the park. The park is their corporate hospitality area which is a building situated here in term one. Both inside and outside, it's got the best view of the track along with an air conditioned room with a bar and catering. It's pretty sick. Other than that, the only other noticeable facilities are amenity blocks and then there's the race control tower where the commentators, timing, stewards and production rooms are. That tower sits in between the in and out shoots of the racetrack. Of all the speedways I've been to in both Australia and the USA, not many have pits that are as nicely laid out as what Northline Speedway has. They've got these wide pit bays with concrete pads for the cars, and it's almost like a mini Perth Motorplex setup with their bitumen roads in between the row of hauler parking. And then, just like Perth again, near the track gates are staging lanes where the cars wait to push out. I think the people running Northline Speedway have realized that to entice people to make the long trip to Darwin, you have to give them a facility that's worth going to. And when you look around the joint, they definitely have done that. Not many speedways have permanent big screens, but Northline Speedway does. They've even made purpose-built car recovery vehicles to make for a faster show. Their names are Tugger and Forky. And one thing that we're seeing more of these days is the electric electronic flag screen, which Northline have now added. It's the exact same setup as what the Motorplex uses. Okay, so what makes Northline Speedway unique and worth going to? Well, firstly, 
climate. This part of the world doesn't have winter and summer, instead they have just wet and dry seasons. And so basically when the rest of Australia is experiencing winter and the speedway racing off season, here in Darwin it's their dry season and they go racing. Another thing that Northline Speedway benefits from is the airport. More often than not, racetracks or speedways can be located pretty far away from the actual city center. And although Northline Speedway isn't surrounded by housing, it certainly isn't far from the city center. When you come to Darwin, you realize that everything is just like 15 minutes away. The city center is only 15 minutes away and the airport is only say a 15 minute drive too. Because of its location, Northline Speedway also has the enviable position of having no noise restrictions and no curfew. So if you're an American watching this, here in Australia at speedways, or most of them, we have curfews and it's not uncommon for races to be cut short or the entire event to be cut short because the event needs to be finished by say 10.30 or 11 p.m. But although you don't want the show to run late at all, they just don't have a curfew here at Northline Speedway. Okay, so what don't I like about Northline Speedway? Well, first of all, I truly think that this is probably the most underrated speedway in Australia. I mean, if this track was located even three hours away from Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, whatever other major city, it would be hugely popular and I think a lot more appreciated, right? But the one thing I guess to just dislike about Northline Speedway is that it's so far away from the rest of the Australian population and the rest of the speedway tracks that we have here in Australia. Don't get me wrong, it is 100% totally worth coming here every year, especially for events like Chariots of Thunder. There's so much to see and do. The weather is beautiful, but it's just not the sort of place that you're going to come and go from especially if you're driving so with all of that said what do you think of northline speedway have you been here before or does it make you want to come here now please make sure you've subscribed to the sprinkler hub youtube channel by clicking up here and if you haven't already make sure to grab your sprinkler hub gear over at sprinklerhub.com